Let's try a little bit of a more complex balancing equation problem. Um, so as you can see, this one's uh, quite a bit more uh, complex than our hydrogen and oxygen combining to make uh, hi um, water. You can see we have a lot more stuff going on. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you um, some steps to be able to solve balancing uh, equation problems. Now, there's no... Uh, you know, really for sure tried and tested method of balancing chemical equations, but um, I'll show you some some useful tips anyway to help you out with these. And the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm going to kind of solve this, it's going to take a while, but I'm going to solve this kind of the long way, and if you kind of stick to this method, you should be able to balance any equation that you come across in your chemistry class. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to split this equation up into the product side and the reactant side. And then I'm going to list everything that I have, uh, all the different elements in these two sides. I have the same elements, but then I'm also going to list the amounts of each of those elements. And so if I look here on the, the reactant side, I can see I have two irons, so I'm going to list that, two irons. I can see I just have the one potassium over here, so I have one potassium. Um, when I get to sulfur though, you can see that I have this sulfur right here in parentheses, and I can see there's a three outside that parentheses, you see that subscript three. And what that three is telling me to do is it's telling me to multiply everything inside of those parentheses by three and so since I only have one sulfur there to begin with if I multiply that by three I'm gonna end up with three sulfurs now oxygen works the same way inside the parentheses you can see I have four oxygens and so I'm gonna take that and multiply that by three four times three is twelve so I have twelve oxygens there um, but I missed something. You may have caught that. Uh, my 12 oxygens are there uh, in the sulfate ion, but then I also have one over here in the hydroxide, and so I need to add that. So let me make that change here really quick, and so I'll change this to a 3 to add that extra oxygen in there. And then lastly, I can see that hydrogen, I just have the one hydrogen. All right, so there's my reactant side. Let's take a look over here at our product side so I can look and see I just have the one iron and I have two potassiums right there and then my sulfurs I just have one sulfur. You can see it right there, just one sulfur and then oxygens, I can see again, are split up in two places. I have some of the oxygen over here in the sulfate, some of the oxygen over here in the hydroxide. And so I have four oxygens plus three oxygens. You can see how this subscript three, again, multiplies everything inside the parentheses by three. And so I have three oxygens plus four oxygens gives me seven oxygens there. And then likewise, I have uh, my hydrogen in those parentheses, and so I have just the one hydrogen in parentheses times three, so I have three hydrogens. Now, as you can see, nothing in this is balanced right now. I don't have anything that's actually balanced. So it looks like I have a lot of work ahead of me, um, but I'm going to give you some steps that should help you with any balancing uh, equation problem. And here's the steps I'm going to give you. Um, they work really well if you stick to them and follow them and kind of list everything like I've done here, especially with those larger um, problems like we have here. So, step number one is first balance the metals. All right, so always start by trying to balance the metals first. Step number two, once the metals are balanced, then you can try to balance the nonmetals. And stump number three, this is the most important one, leave hydrogen and oxygen until the end.
The reason we leave hydrogen and oxygen until the end is because usually they're going to balance themselves out uh, if you've balanced everything else correctly. All right, so let's try to work through these steps. I'm going to start with the metals to start off. All right, so I have two metals. I have iron and I have potassium. Let's, let's just start with iron here since it's uh, the first one that we see. And so right now I have two irons on my reactant side and I have two, uh, one iron on my product side. So let's see what we can do to balance this, uh, this out. Now what I can do in order to balance an equation is I can add coefficients. All right, so in front of any of these formulas, I can put a number there. We call that a coefficient, which is going to work kind of like these subscripts. Okay, but if I put a number here, if I put a number here in front of a formula, it's going to multiply that whole formula by that number. Now I cannot change these subscripts; those are permanent. There's nothing I can do with those. I can only add subscripts. Now, if you are solving a bunch of these problems on a worksheet or doing the, your homework, uh, I highly recommend using pencil because you're going to be um, changing these numbers a lot. The coefficients we start putting down are not uh, are probably not going to stay that way. We're probably going to change them a couple times as we work through balancing this. So let's go ahead and start by trying to balance iron. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is add a 2 in front of my iron hydroxide. All right, that's going to multiply everything there by 2. All right, so it's going to multiply all of this stuff by 2. And so it's not only just going to change the amount of iron, it's also, you can probably see, it's going to change the amount of oxygen and hydrogen. But let's just start with iron and see what happens. Um, first of all, I only had one iron to start with, so I multiply that by 2. And now I have two irons here on the product side. And actually, let me get rid of that and just put a two like that. All right, so now I can see that my irons are balanced. And so following my steps, those three steps I gave you, I'm going to keep on... Uh, moving through my list here, and I'm going to move to the next metal. So potassium is the only other metal I have, and I can see that I have two potassiums on the product side and only one potassium on the reactant side. And so I'm going to put a coefficient here. I'm going to put the coefficient 2. So I'm going to multiply everything there by 2, and that's going to change the number of potassiums I have on the reactant side to 2 and you can see that now my potassiums are balanced. Alright, now moving through, now that now that my metals are balanced, I'm going to move through those steps and now I'm going to work on the nonmetal. So I can see I have sulfur there and so I can see on my reactant side I have three sulfurs, on my product side I have one sulfur and so I'm going to put the coefficient of um, 3 in front of my potassium sulfate and that's going to multiply everything there by 3. It's going to multiply my sulfur by 3 and so I'm going to change over here the amount of sulfurs I have to 3. Okay, But you can see it's also going to change the amount of potassiums I have and I just made that change and so now I have six potassiums. Now don't worry about that because we'll, we'll, we'll go back up to the metals, go back to step one here, but let's just continue on and see what else we changed. We also changed the amount of oxygens. So you can see now we had four oxygens here and we multiply that four by three and so now I end up with twelve oxygens over there plus I have my six oxygens over here on this side, so that's going to change the number of oxygens I have on my product side to 18. All right, now that's all the changes we've just made there. Now let's not worry about the changes that, that just happened with our oxygen. Right, remember, we're going to leave that to the end, but at least I have my sulfur balanced at this point. 
So let's go back up to our potassium here. You can see that my potassium is not balanced anymore. So I'm going to make a change here. And I can see I have six potassiums over on my product side. Okay, so I have the three times two. And I only have two on the reactant side. So let's go ahead and change this to... I'm going to change that to a six, right? Because one potassium times six potassiums, that's going to give us six potassiums over here. So I'm going to change this number to six. And now I'm okay with my potassiums. So let's just quickly check our metals. Our metals are balanced, right? So the irons are two and two, so those ones are good. My potassiums are balanced, six and six. And then we'll check our nonmetals. Our sulfur is also balanced. All right, in the meantime, when I added this six, however, right, so when I added that six right there, I've only accounted for that potassium so far, but I've also changed the amount of oxygen I have on this side. So let's check, take a look at what happened there. Now, I had 12 oxygens right here, plus now I have 6 oxygens right here. So 6 plus 12, you can see that we've changed the amount of oxygens on this side to 18. And as you can see, look what happened. Our oxygens have balanced themselves out. And that's why we always leave those oxygens um, and hydrogens until the end. Let's see if the same thing happened here with hydrogen. And actually, I missed something back here a little ways. When I put this 2 over here in front of that iron hydroxide, I forgot to look at my hydrogen because that changed. I left it at 3 down here. You may have caught that. And so I did have three hydrogens to start with, and since I put that two in front there, I need to change this three to a six. So I really have six. Now, if you've, you've kind of been looking ahead here, you can see here's my one hydrogen on my reactant side in that potassium hydroxide. I'm going to multiply that, apply that by six. And see, I'm going to change this one to a six. And again, you can see why we leave those hydrogens and oxygens until the end because they have balanced themselves out. So just to quickly recap here, those steps, um, you can see our final answer here up at the top. That's what I would, I would write down as my final answer. I would just put those coefficients in there. And so those are the coefficients that make this thing balanced. Um, here's my step. So if you follow these steps, you should be able to balance any chemical equation. First step, start with the metals. Get the metals to balance first. Second step, move on to those nonmetals. And then third step, leave hydrogen and oxygen until the end because usually they're going to balance themselves out.